Howdy hi, Thrill Seekers. Two nights ago, I went and saw the very last Monkees concert ever. That's not what the video is about, but I bought this t-shirt there. This is the bootleg t-shirt. And you know, I do like to support the artists, but the, the official t-shirts just weren't that good. And this was not only a much better shirt, but it was, it was half the price. So, sorry, Monkees. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. First thing, somebody had asked in the comments about do I have a video about dependent origination? And I lost track of where your comment was, so I couldn't reply to the comment directly, but I'm replying here. I do have one that was done. I, I put it up on July 20th, 2020, and the video is called The Twelvefold Chain of Codependent Co-Origination. Co so if you're watching person who asked that question, that's where you can go and you can find my, uh, my video about it. Also, podcast, I put up a new one on Friday, recorded a new one yesterday that will come up next Friday. So it's called the Hardcore Zen Podcast, and you can find it wherever podcasts are found. I'm not getting a lot of listens on this podcast, and I'm wondering whether people are listening, <laughs> because it's not really very popular. But it's there, So and I work on them pretty hard, so go listen. On one of my videos last week, I talked about the idea of using a, a medication to make you be enlightened. And in that video, I kind of went on a little, um, what do you call it? digression, which uh, at least one viewer took to be a kind of a, a criticism of Western medicine. And he responded saying, you know, Western medicine has done great things like the germ theory and bone setting. And I can't remember a bunch of other examples of how great Western medicine is. I don't know if anybody else has, uh, understood it that way. I didn't get, I didn't get any other comments, but I really wanted to address the issue because in a sense, I was kind of, saying something a bit negative about Western medicine, but maybe not the thing that people expect to be said. Okay, so usually when somebody says something bad about Western medicine, has, says something negative about Western medicine, what they what they're sort of implying is oh yeah something else is better like ayurvedic medicine is better or homeopathic medicine is better or you know voodoo medicine which is a real thing is is better and that's not what i was saying so let me uh, explain this to you by telling you a little anecdote about nishijima roshi nishijima roshi was a person who when he made a commitment to something he thought it was extraordinarily important to honor that commitment. And one of his commitments that he made as a regular thing was his commitment to doing a lecture every Saturday at 1 p.m. in English to his group. So one time he got a, a real bad cold. And one time per month, every month, he would do this lecture at the dojo in Motoyawata, which is near Yokohama. And the other times he would do it in Tokyo at the, at the Tokyo University. So this week that he was had the bad cold happened to be one of the weeks where, lucky for him, he was doing the lecture. He was scheduled to give it at Motoyawata, which he actually had a room there that he lived in. He didn't live in there full time, but I think half of the week he spent at uh, the, the dojo in Motoyawata and half the week he spent at his actual home. Okay, So that's the scene. But he had this terrible cold. And a lot of people were saying, well, just, just, don't, just don't give the talk, or we'll be fine. But he was like, no, I'm, I'm giving this talk because I, I always give this talk, and I'm going to do it. So he, he gave the talk, and it was the only time I ever saw him looking at his watch as he gave a talk. Because his talks were always one hour long. And he looked at his watch, and doggone it, once it was exactly an hour of lecture, he ended the lecture, went up to bed, and, you know finished his recuperation from his terrible cold. Now he's about, at this time, he must have been late 70s, maybe early 80s in age, you know, maybe between the ages of 78 and 82 or something. I'm not really sure of his age at the time this happened, but he was pretty old. So around that time, I, I think I must have hung around at the dojo to have witnessed this scene because uh, I didn't usually hang around all day, but this must have been one of the days I hung around. Somebody gave him some medicine uh, that he'd, he'd had. He said, this should uh, help you out with your cold. And Nishijima Roshi said, okay, I'll take the medicine. 
He took the medicine, and a few hours later, uh, he was back mingling with the rest of us again. And somebody said, well, how was that medicine? And he said, oh, it was excellent, because he seemed to be feeling a lot better. And then he kind of paused and he said, it was too excellent. And he kind of laughed, and people laughed, and, and we didn't really pursue the matter. But this is something we had heard him say before. He often talked about things that were too excellent. So something that is too excellent is, is an idea, I think, that is worth exploring, and that's why I wanted to do a video about it. Because we don't normally think of things as being too excellent. Like, you'd think if something's excellent and can get more excellent and can get more excellent, then we should go for the utmost of excellence. There can't be too excellent. And another version of this that uh, Nishijima Roshi often said was things, that, people, that were too sharp. And I think the too sharp and the too excellent were, were related concepts to him. And something I wish he'd talked more about, but I'm going to talk more about it, so, you know, God bless you, Nishijima Roshi, wherever you are. Uh, I'm going to see if I can continue this, this idea of too excellent. So the problem with something that is too excellent, well, there's a lot of problems, and maybe we don't need to go into all of them. But one of the, th the problems is it gives people the impression that if it can do this thing, then it can do everything. So this is why the, uh, the uh, video that I did uh, last week where I talked about the medicine somebody had proposed to me on Twitter you know there ought to be a medicine that can give you samadhi that can give you uh, enlightenment and I, I said there'll never be that kind of medicine but the reason a person would believe that there could be a medicine that would give you samadhi or that would give you enlightenment experience not not that samadhi and enlightenment are exactly the same thing but i think this is the implication that you know you can get enlightened spiritual awakening through a medication is because western medicine is so excellent so when when i'm sort of saying something somewhat disparaging about western medicine i'm not saying that it's no good i'm saying that it's too good and because it is too good it leads one to suspect that if for example a medication can help a person cope with depression or make a person who's suicidal less suicidal um, can um, can alleviate a, a cold can can do all these things you would start to extrapolate and go okay well if we continue on that line we'll get to the medicine that can cure everything, that can cure our own misunderstanding of what reality is. We can do that through a medication. And it's not just in the realm of medicine that this becomes a problem. It becomes a problem also in a lot of realms, but let's, let's talk about one other, which would be technology. We think that because we have the technology to, well, you're looking at this video on an amazing piece of technology. I am making this video at, let me see, 1047 a.m. Pacific time, and people will probably be watching it about an hour after I make it all over the world, literally all over the world. Anybody can can watch, not anybody, but anybody with an internet connection can watch this video anywhere. And that's amazing. Even in my own lifetime, there were times I, I would have thought that was impossible. That 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 seems outrageous. I can remember, <laughs> kids, <laughs> since I'm so old, I can remember being amazed at email because I didn't have to put a stamp on it. I didn't have to pay to send an email to a friend in America. This is when I was living in Japan, and and it would get there instantly. That was amazing. And now we've we've gone way beyond that. And you go, okay. If technology can do that, then technology can solve all our problems. And that's just not true. There are problems which cannot be solved by technology, that cannot be solved by medicine, that cannot be solved by thought. This is the other place where too excellent uh, gets involved. And it's, as I was saying, that idea of too sharp and too excellent are kind of uh, similar and related ideas in, in the Nishijima Roshi way of explaining things. So 
when you're too sharp, you think that you can think your way to a full understanding of reality. And you're not going to think your way to a full understanding of reality. The idea of the theory of everything. Now, of course, I know if you're a scientist, the theory of everything probably doesn't imply what it implies to lay people. But to lay people like me who aren't scientists, the idea of the theory of everything sounds like you're going to have a theory that explains everything, that solves the philosophical problems of life, the universe, and everything. And it's not going to happen. It doesn't work that way. And also getting back to the matter of technology, when we're talking about technology, I mean, there are certainly people who think that there could be a machine that will enable you to have a full realization of reality that will have that will cause an enlightenment experience but it's not just machines technology can also mean technique so it can mean the idea that you could discover a technique mentally working it out that would produce enlightenment would produce peace forever and and wonderfulness and you know with itness and whatever elseness that you're trying to establish through your practice could be done by a technique but all of this stuff this medicine technology technique all these various things are the product of the brain and our brains are incredibly excellent you know I show Ziggy on the uh, videos here you know every time whenever I can you know get him on video Ziggy is a very intelligent animal, and there are animals that are more intelligent than Ziggy, or we assume, uh, like dolphins and, and uh, chimpanzees and things like that. But if you take the difference in intelligence between a chimpanzee, which is you know the most intelligent terrestrial animal we know of, and a human, the difference is incredibly vast. And I'll use the monkeys as a way to prove to you, maybe, or to give you an example of how incredibly, incredibly more smarter we are <laughs> than other animals. The monkeys played a show in which, I can't remember, there, there was a multi-piece band, I'm going to say the 10-piece band. That 10-piece band, you know, fronted by Mickey Dolenz and Mike Nesmith, were able to coordinate and produce I think almost two hours worth of music together and that that all fit together and there was a, an audience there watching it of other similar highly developed apes now if you could get a chimpanzee if you could get two chimpanzees to be able to even just belt out the rhythm of happy birthday that would be astonishing <laughs> like people would be like oh my god, you got two chimpanzees to sing a song. Even, even if they, you know, their mouths aren't, aren't quite right that they can't form the words, even if you could get them to hum the melody together, you'd be just like, this is the biggest breakthrough in the world. That's the difference between us and the most intelligent other animals we know about. So we are way beyond anything else, at least on this planet, in those terms. You know, we don't know what whales think about and dolphins think about, but I, I think, you know, probably we're, we're even beyond those guys. So in terms of being able to do stuff like that and communicate with each other and coordinate with each other and kind of, you know, develop a, a thought into an, an idea, into something that can actually be put into practical application. We are super smart. But the fact that we are so incredibly super smart makes us overestimate our smartness. It makes us overestimate the power of the brain, the power of rationality, the power of logic, the power of, of intelligence, or whatever you want to call it. We totally, totally overestimate it. Uh, we don't realize that there is something way beyond all of this. Most of us have no clue. And even people who get into meditation practices, people who get into Zen, imagine that they can solve the puzzle of, of Zen through thinking about it, through their excellent, two excellent brains. So that is the concept of too excellent, which I think is is one of Nishijima Roshi's great innovations, and it's kind of too bad that he didn't uh, push it as far as he, he could.
could have. You know, he was more interested in translating Dogen and making that available than uh, in, in than pursuing this idea of, of his own theory of, of too excellent. Too ex- the theory of too excellent. I don't know if that's a theory. Maybe that's a good title for the video. Anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about, about two excellence. And there you go. So I hope I did an excellent job of explaining that. If you want to be an excellent person and support me in doing this, you can go to the URL you are seeing on the screen below, which is hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. There you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my main way of making a living. I mean, so much a main way that it's almost my only way of making a living is on the donations I get from you. So I thank you very much for your continued support. But as I always say, this is offered for free. So you don't got to donate. If you don't want to donate or if you can't donate, don't worry about it. This is offered for free. But I do thank you who continue to donate. And we will see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bizels. <laughs> what are you doing? Why? Why? Why are you mad at me? Why are you doing that? Ziggy? Oh no. Oh no. Ah.